wanted you to know I was going to spice things up a little bit and come out here totally naked to help, you know, the whole Gov 2.0 thing get some energy, but they made me put my clothes back on. So, uh, my name is Tim Kephart, and I am the owner of a company called Graffiti Tracker. And what I want to talk to you about uh, is the sort of the evolutionary process that governments have uh, gone through in the past uh, in working with their graffiti problem uh, and some of the different issues that come up. I know, isn't that terrible? It always happens. That's why I put it in there for 30 seconds, just losing a raucous crowd initially. Uh, but what cities were initially doing, uh, they had this graffiti problem that they were constantly experiencing. And so the mentality initially was just leave it alone, don't do anything about it, let the property owners take care of it. Well, the problem with that was they were comparing it to things like if your car was vandalized, and they said, well, you know, the city wouldn't re be responsible for fixing the car. The problem, though, is graffiti happens with such a recurrence rate that it's just not possible for cities to do that. So what they started to do is they started getting abatement crews to go out and paint over the graffiti, which was good, except the mentality was that if you paint over it, you'll never, uh, the, the people will not put graffiti up anymore. And unfortunately, that just isn't the case. Uh, what ended up happening is you painted over the graffiti and then gave them a fresh spot to come right back up and put graffiti over again. So what we needed to do was we needed to look at graffiti from a, a different standpoint, more of an investigatory standpoint. And what we found is that when we actually analyze the graffiti, we find all kinds of intelligence data contained within it. And initially it was thought that graffiti was just something that was up on a wall, a form of urban blight, that really there was nothing that could be done about it. But what was actually able to be the case is that when you were able to track the graffiti and abate it and document it and analyze it, you were able to find all kind of intelligence information contained within the graffiti renderings that could actually significantly aid law enforcement. So like for example, in the past when you would look at graffiti and you would see it as just something up on a wall, what you ended up seeing now when you looked more at it is you could start to see different examples of roll call graffiti or gang intelligence that could be used for threatening images to, for crime related incidents. So for example, in a few seconds here, uh, one of the pictures that's gonna show up, you're gonna see uh, the different monikers you see there, Chuck's dog and Solo. Well, initially when you take a look at a lot of the gang data, um, what you end up finding initially is that the gangs will go and they'll put their graffiti up and so if you talk to law enforcement they'll have you know several hundred active gang members in a particular gang but what we we're able to find that by tracking and analyzing it we could see uh, different incidents of graffiti where those individuals actually associated and hung out together and so by doing that and by tracking that information we could actually find which gang members associated with one another uh, which gang members uh, hung out and, and took part in different things because the, obviously the idea being if they're out there and they're putting up graffiti together, chances are they're probably doing other types of criminal activity together. Uh, and so it was a great way to tap into uh, that sort of uh, underground intelligence, if you will. The one surprising thing that we found too was that when it came to law enforcement, a lot of people in law enforcement really didn't have any information or background or knowledge of graffiti. And what they found was uh, that by going and looking at this graffiti more in depth, we could actually start to see uh, and read it for these individuals and see you know, which, which gang members uh, were hanging out together, get an actual updated list of those most active gang members at any given time. Uh, so it was uh, you know, really good. Then the other thing you can see in this example here with Chucks, you could actually see the other gang members that this person associated with, uh, which became very, very valuable for all sorts of investigations, whether it be murder investigations or uh, armed robbery investigations, things like that. The other thing we were able to do by mapping the graffiti is we could isolate sort of the noise. So if you have a city and you take all your graffiti data and you're mapping it, you're going to see, obviously, like you see in the map there, a great big map with lots of dots all over it. But if you actually are able to go and isolate that image uh, and get that down to where you're in, isolating just the individual tagger, what you end up finding is that the, the noise actually gets filtered out and you can start seeing some patterns emerge. So for example, in this particular case here, uh, you can see where the blue uh, circle is. That's where this individual went and put up his graffiti uh, close to where he lived. And in the big purple circle is a school that he went to and attended. Uh, so as you can see, he walked the entire path to school. And as he was going through that path, he went and tagged up all the way there. So it makes it really simple for law enforcement agencies and for government agencies to be able to track this graffiti. Obviously, you still want to abate it and you want to take it down as quickly as possible, but you want to go beyond that and go beyond the broken windows theory and start actually tracking this information, categorizing it so you can give that information to law enforcement 
to better empower, the, empower them uh, to be able to go after and focus on those individuals that are doing the most damage. And I'm done five seconds, five, before the end of the thing. So uh, that's it. If you have any additional questions, I'll be around. Otherwise, thanks for coming out and have a good day.